Hey guys, listening to the English Made Simple show. This is episode number 248, number 248, numero 248. Hey guys, my name is Milena from English Made Simple. I hope you guys are doing well. Hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to today's episode. If you're new to the show, you can find transcripts to this episode when you visit englishmadesimple.net slash transcripts. Now, today's episode is about natural disasters. We'll be learning new terms uh, or new vocabulary relating to natural disasters. You've probably heard of a recent natural disaster that we had in Australia that was um, actually worldwide. The natural phenomenon I'm talking about uh, is called bushfires. Bushfires. I'll share a little bit of a background before we continue with today's show, before we learn the new um, vocabulary. So as um, most of you know, I live in Adelaide in Australia. I still have close uh, family living in Melbourne. Uh, it's another city in Australia. Like my dad, my brother, my sister and her husband, they all live in Melbourne. Uh, it's just one hour away from uh, from Adelaide. You can fly for one hour or drive for eight hours. Okay. So basically, I went to visit them early January. I spent some time in Melbourne. And while I was there for about 10 days, we had the worst smoke engulf the city. Just the worst smoke. Uh, I had never experienced anything like it before. It looked as though there was a, there was fog outside, but it wasn't fog. It was smoke. Now you're probably thinking, oh, what is fog? What does that mean? That is three letters: F O G. Fog. It's um, it's like a steam. You know, when you boil water and the steam comes out. Well, when you see the fog, it looks like that, but it's not steam. All right. Normally, when you have a foggy weather, you can't see well in front of you. The fog reduces your visibility to almost, you know, a few hundred meters, maybe even less. And it can be dangerous when you're driving, for example. So that's that's what fog means. Now, the whole Melbourne city was covered in smoke. I knew it was smoke and not fog because of the smell. So one morning I woke up and you could just smell like a burning smell. Something is burning outside. It smelled really bad. It stunk like smoke outside. I spent 10 minutes outside and started coughing. Like <laughs> my lungs were affected almost immediately. Um, and it was just terrible to be outside. So I don't think it was a good idea to even spend the 10 minutes outside. Now, I've taken some photos uh, I can share with you um, inside an email. I'll email you with the episode update and I'll attach these photos. If you receive emails from me, you'll be able to see uh, the photo of the suburban Melbourne where I was staying and it was completely covered in smoke. I could only imagine how it was for people who were closer to the smoke and fires. Uh, it must have been really horrifying. A real tragedy happened in South Australia on Kangaroo Island. I think this made world news as well. Yes, there's an island called Kangaroo Island. Uh, it's full of kangaroos and other wildlife. Uh, you can go to a restaurant, for example, and watch kangaroos relax on the beach while you sip on cappuccinos. <laughs> My husband and I were planning to visit Kangaroo Island this year. We could still go, but uh, we'd only see a third of the island. The majority of the island has been destroyed in the bushfire that started in December of 2019. I actually read recently how the fire started. I thought it was uh, something, someone being malicious and started the fire deliberately. But no, it was started by a bolt of lightning from the sky, the lightning, and it just went out of control after that. It created a huge devastation to the wildlife and their habitat. Uh, it's estimated around 25,000 koalas were killed in the bushfires. Just really, really catastrophic. 
The good thing uh, that came out of this disaster, I guess you could call it a good thing, is bonding among people. People were uh, helping each other. Uh, the communities were helping others that are affected by the bushfire. It just amazes me how many people around the world care. There were people around the world donating, donating their time, but also money to care for affected um areas of the bushfire to care for the animals. I've donated to local animal charities who are caring for the injured koalas, kangaroos and other wildlife. Just so you know, I'm using what happened in Australia recently with the bushfires as an example uh, for the show. I'm aware there are other natural disasters that have occurred around the same time, such as uh, the recent volcanic eruption on the White Island in New Zealand that killed 20 tourists who were on the island at the time. Uh, just crazy. There were even floods and cyclones around the world um, around the same time. So yeah, it's been a crazy time for sure around the world. Okay, now I don't mean to bring down the mood, uh, but I thought maybe some of you had been wondering about this. So let's learn some terms about natural disasters. I'm certain that some of you will be curious or don't know some of the terms. All right, but first off, uh, what is a natural disaster? Now, if you look it up online, like online in an online dictionary, or according to Weon Inteligente, I don't know when Weon Inteligente is going to come back, but he will. <laughs> according to Weon Inteligente or the online dictionary, a natural event such as a flood, earthquake or hurricane that causes great damage or loss of life. I'm sure most of you have got it. Most of you know what a natural disaster is is uh, it's a catastrophic series of events caused by extreme weather. Let's go over some of the natural disaster terms you might not know about. Let's start off with floods. And by the way, I'm going to share seven terms with you today. Okay, so let's start off with floods as number one. Floods is spelled as F-L-O-O-D, okay, but it's pronounced flood or floods in plural. It's caused by rising rivers. So if there's a lot of rain and the rivers start to rise and they start to flood towns and um, they reaches the ground and the disaster happens. Uh, the opposite of floods is drought. Now, this is an interesting word to spell. Like if you see it, you will know that it's actually pronounced um, drought. Drought is spelled as D R O U. G H T pronounced drought. We had many drought conditions uh, here in Australia. It's a very regular occurrence. When there is a drought, the government normally introduces water restrictions. Uh, it means you can't wash your car or water your garden whenever you want to, or you can only do it once a week. They impose restrictions because they want to uh, save water. They want to preserve water, drinking water. Now, what are some other disasters that are triggered by extreme weather? Well, it's quite ironic that um, after the bushfires, only a couple of months later, we had so much rain that there were floods even in bushfires uh, zones. And then a week later, we get hail. Hail is another term I want you to uh, remember. Hail, which is spelled as H-A-I-L. H for hello, okay? H-A-I-L. It's like rain, but more like ice falling out of the sky, okay? That's how hail looks like. That's what it looks like. Uh, we had hail the size of golf balls. I kid you not. And I'm going to also attach some photos of that. Uh, it happened in... Melbourne, it happened in Canberra, it happened in other areas around uh, Australia. Just really a freak of nature, if you will. <laughs> Sometimes with hail comes, um, they come thunderstorms and lightning. Okay. Sometimes we get thunderstorms and lightning. Actually, as I'm recording now, there is lightning and thunderstorms happening outside. Uh, it's been 40 degrees Celsius all day today. 
And then just the middle of the day, we get thunderstorms and lightning. So yeah, it's fun to be inside. It's not fun when you're outside <laughs> experiencing this. Okay, so and when you mix uh, thunderstorms and lightning together, you get thunderstruck. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> you don't get thunderstruck. Uh, that's just the name of an ACDC song that I thought could be funny if I say it, but <laughs> it wasn't that funny. Now, <laughs> let's move on. Uh, the next term, uh, what I want you to remember is number four. What we don't have in Australia, we don't have tsunamis. Uh, it's uh, very rare for this to happen in Australia. Even earthquakes are rare in Australia. It's not common. I think everyone is familiar with the term tsunami. Don't have to explain it. I think it is a Japanese word, if I may say so. It's a giant wave that can wipe out a whole city or an island. It's quite scary. It's quite scary. Right, so the next on the list I've got, uh, number five, I want you to remember this term, it's sharknadoes. <laughs> no, I mean tornadoes. Tornadoes, uh, they are a destructive force of rotating winds destroying everything in its path. It's strong winds. Better to hide underground when you see one tornado coming, okay? Lucky we don't have those in Australia. We do have sharks, but not sharknadoes. <laughs> Sharks are not falling out of the sky, people. Okay, the next term I want you to remember is mudslides. Mudslides, it's one word. You can say one mudslide or plural is mudslides. It's a mass of earth or ground rolling down a hillside. So it's detached from the ground, it's detached from the earth, and it's just rolling down a hillside. It's like an avalanche, uh, which is kind of like a big um, section of a snow that's separated from the mountain and then falling down the mountain. In this case, it's not snow, but mud. M-U-D. Mud. Mud is like a mixture of uh, wet, of ground, I guess, ground and rain. So you get this wet ground, which is called mud. Mud. All right. You heard me say uh, clear as mud. That's a kind of like a funny expression that uh, people use to uh, joke around uh, kids. It's kind of like a childish expression. You, you heard me say that too. Okay. Clear as mud. Is that clear as mud? It's kind of sarcastic to say. But mud is not clear. You can't see through mud. Okay. Now let's continue. So we've got mudslides and that's uh, been created by a rolling mud down the hill okay so the mud is rolling down the hill and anything that it catches it wipes out so places where uh, people where you experience uh, a lot of rainfall tend to get mudslides and if there is a lot of hills you're more likely to get mudslides and the last term i want you to learn today is volcanic eruption Eruption. I'm fascinated by volcanic eruptions. I'm fascinated by volcanoes in general. I wanted to visit an active volcano one day. Uh, but quite recently, there was an eruption in the Philippines, not far from the capital of uh, the Philippines called Manila. The Philippines are on something called a ring of fire. The majority of Earth's volcanoes and earthquakes take place along something called Ring of Fire. For example, places like um, Southeast Asia, Chile, Peru, Central America, and New Zealand, to name a few, these countries are placed on the Ring of Fire. And that's where people experience a lot of earthquakes and volcanoes in those places. Now, when I went to Auckland a few months ago, Auckland in New Zealand, I was climbing a Mount Eden. Mount Eden. It's uh, not a very high hill. I walked maybe 20 minutes to climb the hill. Uh, but at the top of the hill is a huge crater. Huge crater. Mount Eden last erupted 15,000 years ago. It's not an active volcano, so it's um, quite safe to climb. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it's now considered a dormant volcano. So if it's not active, it's dormant. 
Very close to the city, only five kilometers from Auckland CBD, uh, you get spectacular views of the city and the ocean. It's just beautiful to go on top of the Mount Eden and see the beautiful landscape. Radio. So there we go, ladies and gents. I'm pretty sure there are more natural disasters out there that I haven't mentioned. But for now, we've learned a handful of terms for natural disasters. It's just easier to remember this way when I don't overshare, okay? <laughs> I usually like to say too much. I like to overshare, but I'm sticking to seven this time, seven natural disasters. Now, if you've enjoyed today's episode and are keen to get your hands on the transcripts to this show, check out net slash transcripts to download, well, now over 60 episode transcripts. The transcripts are there to help you improve your English listening skills and improve your English skills overall. While you're there on the website, you can also get a free gift from me when you go to englishmadesimple.net slash convo, C-O-N-V-O, to download an audiobook on how to simplify conversation. Let me just say it one more time, englishmadesimple.net slash transcripts if you want to get transcripts and englishmadesimple.net slash convo to download your free audiobook. Alrighty, amigos, thank you for joining me in today's episode. You've been an amazing audience and you've been jamming with Milena from English Made Simple. Until next time, hasta la próxima. Mm-hmm.